Adam is going to bring us through the new TV, video delivery, and machine learning in the cloud. And one of you is going to win this beautiful new Google Home device. That is so cool. I think that might be why some of you are here. Take it away, Adam. All right. So, how are you guys doing? So, uh, it's, it's end of day. Appreciate everybody kind of sticking it out. Um, and one of you is going to win a Google Home, so that's pretty cool. Uh, my name is Adam Hanman. I am the North American sales lead for Envato, which is Google Cloud streaming video technology. So Google acquired Envato. Uh, it would be about two years in July. And so what I want to do today is I want to just spend a couple of minutes in the beginning talking about the current video landscape and where we are today. Um, and then I want to talk a little bit about the opportunities that Google sees within media. And then I want to go through Envato and what that solution looks like, and then the advancements that we see machine learning uh, being able to bring to the market. So first thing we should talk about is just the way that folks consume media is obviously very different than 10, even five years ago. You know, it's become very much a la carte. And there is an expectation that I, as a consumer, should be able to watch what I want, when I want. I always joke, I have two little kids, so my oldest is three and a half, and all he cares about every morning when he wakes up, he has to watch either Paw Patrol or Daniel Tiger, uh, you know, one of those shows, and it's always a specific episode, and he doesn't care, but he has his iPad, and that's just the expectation. That's just what he expects. So when I try to level with him, and I try to explain, hey, I remember when I used to flip on the TV, and you know, you just watch what's on, like that's, his mind's blown. That doesn't make any sense to him. To him, it's no, I want to watch this specific episode of Daniel Tiger on my iPad right now. How do I do that, Dad? Um, and you know, again, it's about being able to watch this content on your terms, on any device. So there are tons of connected devices out there. Um, it's just growing and growing and growing when you look at you know, the number of Android devices that are being activated every day number of these over-the-top appliances that are coming out every year. So it's becoming an ever-fragmented world. And you know, you've got all this great content. You've got to figure out, well, how do you deliver it to, uh, to all these devices uh, on these consumers' times? And content today needs to absolutely be data-driven and personalized. So you know, it's one thing to get that content found, and there's a ton of avenues, right? I mean, there's Netflix, and there's Hulu, and there's all these great services that are popping up, and consumers have a ton of options. But as the content owner, it's like, OK, once I have those, you know, once I have that audience, once I have that person, how do I keep them engaged? How do I keep them watching more? And so you've got to figure out, you know, how do you, how do you leverage big data, and how do you personalize this content? So this is Google Cloud by the number. You know, we see a huge opportunity here. We've made significant investments over the last couple of years. Over a billion unique IP addresses served daily, industry-leading SLAs. And a big part, the big foundation here is our network. So we've got a network of data centers. We manage this entire network through public, private fiber, uh, subsea cables. Um, and if you are Writing on Google's network, right? if you're watching video on YouTube, if you use Gmail, if you use G Suite, that's all leveraging Google's network, uh, low latency, high security. So all of it starts with our network. And as we increasingly move into the enterprise, and we're doing a lot in the enterprise and working with some very, very large companies, really security and, and, and scale matters. So we've made significant investments in security engineers, active watch. We've published the white papers. So scale and security are absolutely critical and very, very important to us. Now, we see a tremendous opportunity for media. And I, I think it really boils down to three things here. Right, so when, when we talk about well, what, is, what is Google Cloud doing for media today, I think it comes down to content, audience, and organizational agility. So with content, right, we're helping broadcasters, we're helping media companies very quickly create quality content, getting it distributed to you know, this ever-increasingly fragmented market. 
We're helping them reach an audience. We're helping them reach that personalized audience, helping them deliver content to unique users, making sure that the right audience sees the right content. And then lastly is operational efficiencies, organizational uh, agility. And really taking as much as we can here and putting it in the cloud. Now Google Cloud has a bunch of products specifically for media companies, everything that really spans the whole content life cycle. So we've got everything from Zinc on the far left, which is burst rendering in the cloud, through a full streaming OTT platform called Envato, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, machine learning. We obviously have double click for monetization, playback, and obviously, data is a, is a, huge, uh, a huge focus point for us. So these are just some of the products that we have today for media companies specifically. And we work with several broadcasters, a lot of broadcasters, a lot of media companies. And we have a full end-to-end -end streaming uh, platform, everything from content acquisition all the way through distribution and playback. So what that platform is called, that's Envato. So that's what I talked about uh, you know, a couple of minutes ago. This was the acquisition that Google made uh, roughly two years ago. So Envato is a software as a service platform that sits on top of GCP, Google Cloud Platform. So I want to spend a few minutes, and I want to talk about the various components of Envato. And then I'm going to very quickly talk about some of the neat things that we're doing to become a little bit more modular and what we've got in market there. So the first thing to, uh, to discuss with Envato is the live transcoding. So Envato, there's, there's two ways that this can work. Uh, we have a software-based encoder, which is deployed on commodity hardware. So we can actually do the live encoding off of the, the local unit. We can also do the live encoding in the cloud. So as a customer, if you just want to pass uh, our TMP, for example, we can do all of that live encoding in the cloud. We support all the in-band metadata transport, control room features, uh, like the start, stop, override streams, uh, as well as server-side ad insertion, which I'll talk about in, uh, in a few minutes. And we also support VOD encoding. So we have the ability to ingest VOD assets and then transcode them into multiple bit rates and renditions um, so that you can reach these various platforms and various devices that your audience expects to be able to consume content on. Everything you would come to expect, we support DRM, we support captioning, uh, bumpers, SCSI markers so that we can do uh, ad, ad stitching as well. We also do live to VOD. So what I mean by live to VOD, if you're a broadcaster and you're able to pass through these SCSI markers, we can actually leverage those markers to help create a clean video asset uh, once that program is done, which then can then be sent back and be used for uh, on-demand consumption at a later time. So that's the first aspect of live to VOD. We also have cloud editing. And what this means is as your live stream is occurring, we actually have a, a cloud-based video editor where you can very quickly do in, in point and out point, maybe do a quick bumper or a fade in and fade out. And you can very quickly create these discrete video assets that are then sent back to your site, syndicate them out to your partners uh, for VOD consumption. So a, a great example of this is we've got several local broadcasters. And when the 6 o'clock news or the 10 o'clock news occurs, there's those 10 stories in a given local broadcast that those broadcasters own. And so what they will do is as that newscast is streaming live, they're sitting in Envato very quickly, chopping up those clips as it's airing, publishing it back to their website, publishing it out to syndication partners. And this is really critical for broadcasters because for them, you know, time is of the essence. You've got to monetize this content as quickly as possible. So cloud editing is a... Uh, is a very, very big, important functionality for us. Um, next is metadata. So we do not try to shoehorn into a specific metadata structure. Envato is very flexible. Uh, and we support out of the box for 
typical metadata structuring, for example, series, seasons, episodes. Uh, but the idea here is to really help conform to your business. Uh, content playback. So this, I think, goes all the way back to the beginning of the presentation, right? So it's about being able to take this content and make sure that it can be watched on all the platforms, all the devices that your audience expects to go and, and consume it. So we've got players and SDKs uh, to allow for that content to be played back. We also support server-side ad insertion. So we have very, very tight integrations with, of course, DoubleClick. We also work with Freewheel and a couple others. Basically, any vast compliant ad server. So all the ads are continued to be trafficked through the ad server, but on Vado can provide the actual stitching of that ad for both live and VOD content. And then there's syndication. So what I mean by this is being able to take assets and being able to take a live stream or being able to take a VOD asset uh, and to push these out. And we offer two different types. There's a social syndication. Where you can send it to YouTube, to Facebook, to Twitter. And then there's sort of the more premium distribution packaging up this content, sending it out to Hulu and Netflix, among others. And so there's a lot of efficiencies that can, be, uh, that can be driven here, because all of these distribution outlets have their own metadata requirements, their own XML formats. They want it in this, in this bit rate and that bit rate. So you know, we see a, a huge opportunity here to drive efficiencies around syndicating content. And lastly here is analytics. So I'll spend a minute. I'll talk about what we have today. So today, out of Envato, we are providing operational metrics. What do I mean by that? John uploaded X number of videos. Jane edited this metadata. You know, it was approved by this person. So it's all about operational metrics, who's touching the content, giving a full audit trail of what that, uh, what that editing history looked like. And then we turn to partners for other types of uh, metrics. So for example, uh, video engagement analytics, we turn to a partner. We do the same thing for quality of service and, and, and site user metrics. I'd like to give a little bit of a glimpse into where we're taking analytics. So we have a new analytics product, which is currently in an alpha right now. This will be linked to Google Cloud Platform. And you will be able to understand how content is performing. So not only are you getting operational metrics, you're going to be getting video consumption data, understanding how much of this content was watched, by whom, on what platform, quartiles, et cetera. And then we also have the ability to ingest other third-party data and pulling that all in. So you're going to have video consumption data, which is coming from Envato players and SDKs. It, we're also going to be releasing these SDKs for uh, other players that are not Google Envato provided. So you're able to now pull in all of this video consumption data. You then augment that with, say, for example, your YouTube data, your double-click data, Crux, Facebook. All of that gets pulled into Google Cloud and funneled into BigQuery, which is our data warehouse. And where this gets interesting now is you're able to then run a real 360 degree view of how is this content affecting my business, right? How is it affecting ad optimization? How is it affecting what type of content am I, am I producing? So by leveraging BigQuery to sort of run these, these tough questions, um, we see a, a tremendous opportunity here. And then when you combine that with machine learning, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit, uh, really, the, the, the possibilities are endless. So this is a, there's a lot going on on this one over here on this slide. But I, what I want to demonstrate and what I want to convey here is really the full end-to-end Envato -end workflow. And you can see it's everything from capturing an encoding signal, and then you see how that progresses through Google Cloud. So we can do all the VOD transcoding, the live to VOD, the play services. Obviously, that sits then on top of Google Cloud for storage. We can offer Google CDN. And then uh, lastly, it 
comes out with the Envato SDKs and players. Now, everything that I've talked about so far has sort of been this, this SaaS model, this end-to-end -end solution. But that's not going to meet the needs of everybody, right? When we understand that a lot of broadcasters, a lot of media companies have their own player, have their own MAM, really what they're just looking to do is take bits and pieces and use them as a service. And so we have started modularizing Envato. So we've started basically taking core functionality from Envato and turning them into APIs to be used on a, uh, on a pay for what you use model. And so the first one that we've put out, which is in an alpha right now, is our VOD transcoding API. And so this is really good for media companies that are only looking to encode at scale. That's it. Uh, there'll be a few others, enhancements, and there'll be some other APIs that are coming uh, over the course of the year. But this is in an alpha right now. Um, and highly encourage if any of you are GCP users, if, if there's an interest in getting whitelisted to try this out, certainly reach out to, uh, to your local GC rep, or you can talk to myself as well. So what's next, right? Where do we go from here? Um, look, it's great that you can deliver high quality content to an audience at scale across all of these various platforms and devices, but you know, how do we take it to the next level? How do we increase personalization? All that ties into machine learning. We are huge proponents of ML at Google. It's done wonders for our business. And we're really, really excited about the possibilities that it could bring uh, to our customers. Um, if you take a look at the typical video supply chain, so this is the typical video workflow here, we think ML can drive enhancements really at every, every stage. Everything from signal capture to transcoding, leveraging ML to figure out you know, what, are the, what are the best bit rates and formats that we should be encoding this content. Syndication, you know, where, where should we be sending this content? Where should we be investing more with these partners? Monetization, can we figure out how to optimize the ad placement here? So these are all questions and these are all things that ML can really drive efficiencies around. There's a, a bunch of use cases. Uh, we see everything from metadata tagging, prepping speech to text, so making your content uh, ready for a global distribution, sentiment analysis, figuring out what content should we be spending more money on creating. So these are some typical media machine learning use cases. Uh, that we're seeing when we're talking to, to our customers. Here's an example. We talk about a, a pseudo live channel. What can be done today? Well, today, you can take a bunch of VOD assets, stitch them all together, play them out as a linear channel, and present that to all, all of your customers, right? Everybody sees the same thing. What if we could apply machine learning to this and start personalizing specific assets for each viewer. So that if I'm into, I'm a big New York Giants guy, right? So if I'm into Eli, all of a sudden I can, and I, I can start getting all my Eli highlights, right? So we see a huge opportunity here for being able to create these pseudo live personalized channels uh, that are unique to individual viewers. So the first API uh, I'm going to talk about is Google's Cloud Vision. You guys may be familiar. Anybody that uses Google Photos gets to actually take advantage of this today. So if you use Google Photos, you see that it starts to understand pretty quickly who these people are in your, in your photos, and they start to automatically tag. And so what the Cloud Vision API is is exactly that, face detection, which is being used by photos today, identifying logos identifying labels, detecting when something is explicit, landmark identification. These are all things that can be discovered through the Cloud Vision API. And 
We've got several customers taking advantage of this API today. Box is one of them. This is interesting. They're using this to be able to better tag their content. So here the example is I'm searching for a green jacket. So they're using ML to add that additional metadata layer uh, to their content to make it more searchable. The next is, is cloud video intelligence. And this is what's happening in the video. So being able to understand scene detection, when does, when does a scene start, when does it end, what's happening, are they playing football, is it a touchdown? Um, so it's about getting a greater understanding of what's happening in the video. And we've been talking with a lot of customers, a lot of broadcasters that have a huge archive of video, and they're trying to figure out how do we put this in the cloud how do we figure out what's happening in that content? How do we really maximize the value of this content that's really just been sitting on tape somewhere, sitting in an archive? And so it, this, is, this is one example. I mean, imagine being able to say, um, I want to see chopped season three highlights. And, and by the way, Scripps is a, is a customer of, uh, of Envato's. But imagine being able to say, hey, I want to see some highlights of chopped season three and being able to automatically generate what these, uh, what's happening in these clips and, and creating a, a personalized highlight reel. Adam, I'm going to have to ask you to can I wrap it up. Wrap it up. OK. So we'll keep going here. I got uh, like two minutes left. Um, lastly is the monetization aspect. So being able to add or show a proper ad um, or a relevant ad as the content is happening. Um, we also have a translation API. So this is to prep content for global distribution. All this is is basically you have your content, let's say, in English. You want to run it through speech to text. So you run it through a, a translation API to globalize it and obviously shave a lot of time uh, and money there prepping it for a, for a global audience. This is the last. I will end on this note here where we see uh, what's available today Right, is we have these APIs. You can leverage them. You can create these data models. You can train them. Where we see this is what we call AutoML. So we are starting to put out a, uh, a series of GUI interfaces with pre-trained models. You bring your data set in. You can import it into, into GCP. Uh, and very quickly, without having a lot of engineering and ML re uh, resources, be able to very quickly uh, run it through our uh, various ML APIs. And the first one that we have out there right now is the, uh, is the vision. So uh, with that, I thank all of you for taking the time. I apologize if I went uh, a minute or so over. Uh, but thank you again.